Hey, everybody. Welcome to church. Y'all doing all right today? Good to see you. Fort Worth, would you join me in giving a warm welcome to everyone watching from other campuses, everyone watching on the other side of the screen? Come on, let's welcome them into church today. God bless you all. We love you. I'd like to ask you to do two things for me, if you would, that are watching online. Would you hit the share button right now just to help get the word out to your friends and family? I think the teaching today is going to help them. And then would you let us know where you're watching from? We would love to know. We're getting reports in and responses all the time from people in Texas and other parts of the states and also places around the world. So we just want to pray for you. So just let us know where you're watching from. We missed you all last week. Don and I were in in uh, Mineral Wells with our spiritual family of Mineral Wells. Let me tell you something, they are doing an awesome job, an awesome job. I'm so excited for what's happening in that congregation, getting ready for all the expansion that's gonna take, in, take place in Mineral Wells. And, and let's celebrate this, 10 people in Mineral Wells last Sunday prayed and asked Jesus to forgive their sins. Can we celebrate that? Come on. And then I just want you to know that that, uh, that we love you, that things are going great with us. And, and um, I just want you to know that there's something that excites me whenever we're on one of the other campuses is that I know that the teachings here are still gonna be phenomenal. Didn't Pastor Zach and Miranda do a great job last week? Here's what someone said to me recently. We love it that we never know who will be speaking at church, but we know for certain that the messages will always be great. Man, that made my, my, my day, week, month, and year. That was just an awesome affirmation. All right, we're gonna continue to talk about relationships. Everybody say relationships. Gonna continue to talk about connecting, having relationships get stronger and deeper because our world is talking about separating us, but I just believe the Lord prompted me to help you to talk about how to be connected, how God wants our lives to be connected. So I wanna com- to just continue on today to combat and stand against all the discouragement all the depression in our world right now, and just to give you some nuggets to help you to be strong in your relationships. So here, here's a truth that I pray that you grasp hold of today. It's very simply this. Relational happiness comes from knowing and being known. It's what all of us want. Whether we want to admit it or not, we all want to be known, and we all want to know other people. And so the Bible speaks to this, and this is the verse that we have taught from these last three weeks. It's Romans chapter 12, verse 10, where the Bible says this, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Now that brotherly love, remember, is friendship love. And a couple weeks ago when Don and I started this series, when we team taught, and then last week you probably heard it as well, friendship love is the basis for all of your relationships, it's, the, it's, the, it's what you want. In your marriage, listen, if you realize it yet or not, those of you that aren't yet married but will be someday soon, you spend a lot more time talking than you do in lovemaking. That's why you need good friendship in your marriage. Can somebody say amen? And so be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. So let's move on. Message number three. Somebody say three. Relationship rules for families. We want to talk about your biological family today, your marriage, your family, and your spiritual family. So a couple little thoughts as we get rolling here. Some families are temperamental, half temper, half mental. (laughs) Some families are like fudge, a little bit of sweet and a few nuts mixed in as well. One little girl asked her mom, said, Mom, where do human beings come from? She said, well, many years ago, God created Adam and, and then Eve, and they had children, and it just kept going all the way down, and that's where I came from. And she, the little girl said, Mommy, I asked Daddy where humans come from, and he said we evolved from apes. The mom quickly said, Well, honey, he told you about where his side of the family comes from, but I told you where my side of the family comes from. All right, we're going to be in Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 1. This passage, I hadn't seen this before, but as I dug in, this passage speaks to both biological families and to spiritual families, the people of God. I hadn't seen this insight before and it really excited me. So let me tell you about Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a Jewish man that got captured when Babylon, which is now modern day Iraq, invaded Israel. So he was captured and led away. Not everyone was captured. Some some escaped, and we'll talk about that in a second, but Nehemiah was one that got captured. Now his job in Babylon was he was the the cupbearer for the king. So what that simply means is, is he tasted everything before the king drank it. So he was the wine taster. I heard some of your thoughts right there. That'd be a great job to have. 
I love to have that job. Well, the most common way to kill people in that day secretly was to poison the drinks. So it might be a great job until you drink the, the poison. But that was his job. And so we pick up this book in the Bible about a guy named Nehemiah, and we see these two things. He loved his family, and he loved the people of God. So now look with me in, in Nehemiah chapter one, verse one. Now it happened in the month of, now I didn't look up the pronunciation of this, of this place. It's either Chislev or Shizlev. Anyway, I didn't look it up, so I don't know how to say it right, which we're taught in school to always look up how to pronounce things. And somebody should have told me that before I taught a message about a guy named Nicodemus. For those of you that don't know, he's in John chapter three and his name is really Nicodemus. Or when I taught a whole message one time about tithing and I talked about an Italian prophet named Malachi. But his name is really Malachi. So I don't know how to say the name of this place, but I did look up a name that we're coming up on here. In the 20th year, I was in Susa the Citadel. That Hanani. Look at this, one of my brothers, never seen this before in my studying of the scriptures. Nehemiah had a brother that escaped the invasion. His name was Hanani, and he was living in Jerusalem. Nehemiah was the one captured, and he was still enslaved in, in modern day Iraq, in Babylon. And so what happens is, is Hanani gets a pass to be able to go visit with his brother, so Hanani, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And then they said to me, the remnant. Now I wanna stop right there for a second. I want you all to know that there always has been and there always will be a remnant of God's people in every society, in every culture. And I just want you to know that as things are changing and transitioning, I believe toward evil in our world, some of the legislation being passed right now is just absolutely opposite of what I believe and how I live my life. I believe God's word is true. We can trust God's word and we can live according to God's word. And I believe when God's word gives definition to something, that's enough because that means the designer is letting us know how the design will work. But we're doing all kinds of crazy things in our world right now and it could be at some point that those of us who have not been persecuted will be. But let me just tell you this, in spite of what might be coming our way, I know for a fact that there will be people like you and I that will still hold true to the ways of God, that will not renounce our love for God, that will stand firm until the end, that will worship our God and celebrate the goodness of our God regardless of what happens to us. There has always been a remnant and there always will be a remnant of people who love the one true God. And I just want you to be encouraged by that. There's some good news today in spite of all the bad news going on in our world. The remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. So in other words, the people that didn't get captured and taken into bondage, they're living in an exposed place. There's no citadel, there's no fortress for them to live in. And then look at Nehemiah here. As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So when he heard the bad news about what was going on with his spiritual family, the people of God that were still surviving after the whole country and nation had been ravished, it burdened him. He literally sat down, just dropped down and sat there and prayed and fasted and wept and called out to God on behalf of those that he loved that were a part of his spiritual family. And it just struck me. It, it, just, it just hit me as I saw this, that maybe we need some pointers on not only how to have a good marriage and not only how to have a good family, but how to have a good church family, about how to have the right mindset as, as we're living in an age and in a world that's quickly changing. I, I don't believe toward good, but God can make a difference through people's lives like you and me. And so here are some thoughts that I wanna share with you today. Successful families pray. What are you supposed to do when the bad report comes? What are you supposed to do when on the other side of, of some papers in hand or, a, or an iPad in hand that the doctor with a long face has given you bad news? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to do when that email comes? And it is not what you were hoping for. 
As a matter of fact, it's way worse than what you ever anticipated it could be. What are you supposed to do when the phone rings and you don't recognize the voice on the other side? And it's bad news. What are you supposed to do? I'm here to tell you, friend, the best response to anything good that comes to your life or anything bad that comes to your life is to talk to God about it. The best response is to pray. Why? Because God loves you more than anyone else does. And he has the capacity to hear and answer your prayers. And he is on your side, even though your enemy's trying to convince you that he's not. And he is good, and he loves you, and he wants to help you, and the best thing you can do is to talk to him about it. When in doubt, pray. When in doubt about what's going on, pray. Listen, normally we think, well, I can fix this. Especially men. I I just, I know what to do to fix this. But quite often what happens is frustration sets in, disappointment sets in. That relationship isn't able to be fixed. That situation isn't able to be fixed. It's something that's that's going wrong in someone's body that you love. The best thing we can do and the first thing we can do is to call out to our God, to humble ourselves and pray. Listen, make prayer your first choice, not your last chance. Just talk to God about it. He cares. He loves He wants to work in your life and on your behalf. Just talk to God about it. See, when something upsets you, take it to the Lord. Now I wanna just take a second and tell you how God taught this to me through my biological family and then helped me to understand later in life how this also applied to my spiritual family, you. Let me tell you about Dawn and I. We were married and came from two really different backgrounds. She had a way that she thought marriage was supposed to be And I had a way that I was sure marriage was supposed to be. We had one marriage counseling session and it was to plan the wedding ceremony. We had no help to know how to have a good marriage. And when we got married, all hell broke loose. She cried every day. I just started telling myself, she just likes to cry. It's just the way she's made. What I said shouldn't have caused that to happen. It's just her deal. Listen, ladies, let me help you to understand something. When you think that you're communicating it to to us and that it's gonna get in here, it goes like this. It most of the time goes over the top and we miss it. Listen to me, ladies, it's gotta go like this. And even then, we still might not get it. Come on, men, come on, be honest, give me an amen right there. And so it, it was difficult for us. And then the first pregnancy came along. And we were so excited. But then it quickly ended in a miscarriage. And God taught me that I needed to learn how to pray and how to love, that I didn't need to learn how to solve the problem and give the one, two, three steps. And then God blessed us with Bethany. Praise the Lord. How many of y'all love Bethany? Isn't she awesome? Just brings the presence of the Lord when she leads worship. And then the third pregnancy. Made it through the first three months. And then right as she was finishing, going into the into the next trimester, she began to lose that pregnancy. Testing showed us that it was a chromosomal mismatch, that the, that little one probably wasn't gonna be able to make it anyway, but still difficult. I mean, the one that I loved was broken and hurt, and I was too. And the Lord taught me how to pray for her. And then God blessed us three in a row, Jeremy, Jonathan, and Brianna. How many of y'all love, uh, our kids are just, they're just awesome because Our kids are just awesome, and I'm gonna score some points here, guys. Pay attention, because their mom is awesome. And then the seventh pregnancy. Uh, Went for a while, and then some difficulties set in. And Dawn had a condition in her womb that that was not good, and she had to go to on her back bed rest. And we were just two weeks away from her being able to deliver premature for the baby to be able to make it. We were two weeks pre of preemie. And that pregnancy didn't make it either. And born was a little boy about the size of my flip phone. That was back in the days when we carried flip phones. About the size of my flip phone, maybe a pound and a half or two pounds, named Jared. And he lived about five minutes. And I got to talk to him and tell him that I loved him and told him that I was looking forward to eternity with him. Told this a bunch of times, but it gets me each time. And I really learned how to pray for Dawn then. Because the Bible talks about when, when Herod was slaughtering all the children below age two, and there's a verse that says, I heard the sound of Rachel weeping in Ramah. That is a cry that's just, just nothing like what you've ever heard, and I heard it in our bedroom that night. 
And God taught me even more so in the depths of my soul about how to pray, how to pray for my family. But then he taught me later how it applied to my spiritual family. And then God spoke to us and said we weren't supposed to finish there and God gave us Josiah. What a blessing he's been. Many of y'all don't know him, he's a man child. So, so Josiah's in this service, stand to your feet and wave to the camera, I want everybody to see you that's at home too. I did that just because he hated every second of that. So thank you, thank you for joining in. And God has blessed our family, but through the ups and downs, in that, in that season of learning, I now have an understanding about how Nehemiah felt. When he heard the report from his biological brother that things are bad back home, bro, and then he understood that it didn't just apply to the family called Nehemiah's family, it applied to all the people of God. And now I just want you to know that there's a connection for us, regardless if we accept it or not, there's a connection for us from our family to God's family. And the answer is still the same. The number one thing to do after good news, after bad news, is to talk to God about it. That is what will protect you and provide strength in your relationships. So let's move on. Let me show you two ways to pray. Let me just get practical with you here because I know, I know there are a lot of you wanna know how to pray for your family, how to pray for your marriage, how to pray for yourself. Here we go. Number one, pray for wisdom for yourself and for your family. Why? Because God has it and you need it. Pray for wisdom. Colossians chapter three tells us that all wisdom and all knowledge is found in Christ. In James chapter one, the Bible says this, if any of you lacks wisdom... Let him ask of God, who gives to everyone generously and without reproach, and it will be given to the one who asks for wisdom. But let him ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Don't let that one expect they'll receive anything from the Lord. What's the point? All of us need wisdom. Somebody say amen right there. All of us need wisdom. We all need more of what God has in our lives. And what we do is we ask for it. See, here's the truth. The only true wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing apart from God. You might think you know what's right, but really what's right is what God reveals to you that is right through his word. And then pray for vision. Pray for vision for your marriage, your family, for your church. Pray for vision. Every relationship needs a vision. You need it for your life. God wants you to have vision for your life. What is vision? It's where you're going and why you're going there. You need it for your life, you need it for your marriage, you need vision for your family. Don and I asked God to give this to us and God has blessed us with it and it now carries over to you all because we love you like our kids. And God wants us to live with vision. Nehemiah's vision was for his biological family and for his spiritual family. Why, because the two are so similar. And so he prayed and he asked God for vision about how to provide protection for the people back home that we're exposed and in a difficult place. We pray for our children, we pray for our grandchildren, we pray for our spiritual kids. What's your vision? Where are you going? Are you coming out of addiction? Praise God, what's next? Are you just entering into marriage? Praise God, he'll help you. What's next, where are you going? Are you raising a family and you're wondering, how's this supposed to happen? Let me just tell you, ask God how it's supposed to happen and he'll let you know, he'll give you vision. He'll help you out because he loves you that much. Every relationship needs vision. And you just simply pray for it and ask God for it. So I wanna tell you about how God tied wisdom and vision together for our spiritual family just last year. So I've been talking to y'all for a while about how, how God wants us to still help people. Just because we've been able to help a lot of people, we haven't arrived yet. Somebody should say amen right there. There are a lot more people that God wants us to encourage, God wants us to give strength to, God wants us to help. And in 2019, we, we were close to 1,800 people per weekend. And that was awesome, that many folks coming to church. But what it meant was, was our volunteers were really getting stretched out. So as I shared with y'all before, we started trying to figure out how do we make this room bigger? How do we make for more parking? How do we get another driveway in and out of here because it can really get jammed up when we have full services? How do we do those things? And nothing worked out. I mean, nothing worked out. We got a no from the rancher. We got a no from TexDOT. We got a no from Benbrook. I mean, nothing worked out. And so I'm praying. I believe God wants us to keep reaching people and helping people, but we gotta have room to be able to do it. And then people from Parker County begin to catch me in the hallway after services and begin to share with me about how God has encouraged their life and about how God has helped them through the worship and the teachings and through the small groups here. 
And that always excites me when somebody gets strong through a small group. That excites me to the depths of my soul. And, and I just began to think about, Lord, would you ever have us to go to Parker County? And then 2020 hits, and a pandemic begins to crash the world. And, and we're told to stop, stop everything, slow down. But in my spirit, I'm not inclined that way. I'm not inclined to let the natural dictate the spiritual. I'm inclined to ask God, what are your plans? What do you wanna do? And I just felt like God spoke to me and said, don't stop, don't quit, don't, don't hit neutral and don't put it in park. Keep moving forward with the people of God. And one day in my quiet time, I'm in Psalm 107. If you wanna go there, you can find this. I'm reading along and I see the word city. I read a little bit more and I see the word city again. And I'm thinking, okay, God, you're, you're causing that word to jump off the page into my heart. Well, what, what, are you, what are you saying here? Well, what's the wisdom here? What's the vision here, God? And then I see it again. And then he just prompted me. You know, do you remember, Jeff, you went to see a movie, The Passion of the Christ, at a theater in Hudson Oaks, out in Parker County, and don't you remember the name of that theater complex? And I was like, no. So I don't remember. So I just got in the car after my quiet time today and drove out there. The name of the theater complex was City Lights Theater. I was like, God, are you speaking about this? And I felt like he said, yes, I've sent those people from that area to appeal to you to start a church out there for a reason, and I want you to try to buy this building. Now that's a big step during a pandemic to take a step of faith, to, to step out like that. That was a big step. And I said, okay, God, uh, can you tell me again can, can you make sure that there's a, a way that I know that this is you and not me, that, that it won't get us stretched out and get us in trouble? Because after all, God, there is a case you don't know, there is a pandemic in the world right now. And then a couple days later, Pastor Bree came to me and said, Dad, I had a dream, she's my daughter, I had a dream about, about a building west of here, it was right off of I-20, and, as, and you could see it from I-20, and it had a red ring around the top of the building, and it wasn't a church, but, but I think it was turned into a church. And she said, we were having a student conference there and there were lots of kids there. It was going way better than what we thought it was gonna be and I had to go over to the Walmart. There was a Walmart right next to it, Dad, to get more food and to get more supplies. What do you think it means? Well, smart as I am, I sit down, I flip open locations for Walmart and there's one right next to City Lights Theater in, in Parker County right next to it. And so God gave the confirmation needed and I hadn't said a word to anybody about what God had spoken to me that day about the word city coming out of the scripture over and over and over again out of Psalm 107. What's the point? If you believe God is good and you believe God has all wisdom and you believe God has his eye on you and you believe God has vision for your life and you believe God is for you and not against you and you believe that he's walking with you and not leaving you on your own and you believe that he will help you when you call out to him, then that means that you can get his wisdom and you can walk in vision and he will bless you every step of the way. And I just want you to be encouraged with that today. How do you pray? You ask God for wisdom, you ask him for vision. Are you willing to ask God for vision for your life and for your family? All right, let's go back. I have another suggestion. Successful families persevere. I wanna encourage you to keep on going. Keep on trucking, baby, as the song says. Nehemiah chapter four. I want you to see what happened to Nehemiah. When Sanballat and Tobiah, I looked up how to pronounce it, that's how you say it. When Sanballat and Tobiah, these guys are bad dudes. I mean, bad as in no good. And, now I want you to look at this, three people groups, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites. These three didn't like each other, but they had a common enemy in the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, so they united together with these two troublemakers to do what? Heard that there was a repairing of the walls of Jerusalem, and it was going forward, and the breaches were beginning to be closed, and they were very angry. Look in verse eight. And they all plotted together to come and fight against, somebody say those two words, fight against, Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. So when you are moving forward in faith, you can expect opposition. Listen, friend, the enemy doesn't like it that you're in church today. He doesn't like it that you want good things for your marriage and for your family and for your church today. 
He doesn't like it that you're making choices toward God, and he's not gonna stand idly by and let you just go off into a blessed life. He's gonna oppose you. He's gonna try to bring things your way to get you to quit. The question is, is will you quit? The question is, is will you trust or will you turn? And I wanna encourage you today to trust, persevere, keep on going. Even though you might not be able to see where you're going and what the end is, God is good and when he's walking with you, you can make it through whatever it is. Keep on going, trust him, persevere. When you're moving forward in faith, you can expect opposition. Why? Because your enemy doesn't want you to move forward. He wants to have access in your life. The enemy works in your life to keep access into your soul to hurt you again. He wants to try to break you down and hurt you. The question is, is will you just sit back and let it happen? And I wanna encourage you to say, no way, not here. So how do you do that? Well, those who persevere know how to discern the enemy's tactics. You need to know how he works, how he wants to harm your relationships. You need to know what he's about so that you can resist that and not accept it. So I'll just summarize Isaiah 6, verses one and two for you about four things that he did. Somebody say four. Okay, jot these down. These are important that you understand. These are the way the enemy works. Number one, distractions. There's a blank there in your notes, and it's also on the app if you're following along. Distractions. Here's what Tobiah and Sanballat said, and the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites. Hey, come down off that wall and talk to us. Hey, stop what you're doing and come talk to us. We got some questions for you. The second is compromise. The enemy will try to get you to stop moving forward with God for your life, for your marriage, your family, for your church. He'll get you to compromise. How? Here's what they said. You've done enough already. They built the wall in 52 days. These former slaves built, I mean, boom. God blessed them. They hit critical mass. Boom. They were after it. The third is manipulation. Here's what the bad guy said against the people of God. It's not gonna work out. It's just, it's not gonna work. What you're doing is not gonna work. How many of y'all have ever heard something like that in your mind? Yeah, that, that's the enemy. God doesn't say that to you. And then the last is accusation. And here's what they said. If a fox were to jump on that wall, it would crumble. Now, just for record, somebody look me up and check me on this, but I think the wall was six feet thick and 14 feet high. There's not a fox on planet Earth that can jump on a wall like that and make it crumble. But there was some humiliation in that accusation. So the enemy wants to distract you, wants to get you to compromise, wants to get you into a place where you're able to, easily able to be manipulated, and wants to get you to listen to accusation. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to accept any of that. It doesn't come from God. You don't have to accept it. He still wants to do it to you today as he did it to those who have loved God before you. Listen, you might be hearing something like this in your mind. You don't want your kids to be unpopular, so don't be so fussy about everything. Just lighten up. Or you might hear something like this. Everyone else's kids are doing it. Your kids will be fine. Or maybe you've heard this before from the enemy. You're just too strict and your kids don't like you. Hey, I've got news for you. Parenting is not a popularity contest. And leadership has never been easy. I'm not telling you be mean to your kids. I'm not telling you ignore what they're saying. I'm not telling you become an adversary. I'm just telling you, you're the parent and you're the leader. Act like it. Trust God. Step into a strong pace and move forward because as you learn to do it in your family, you'll be able to do it in the house of God. And we need churches that are moving forward, that wanna help people, that wanna strengthen people, that wanna bless marriages and families. We need people in churches that have a desire to help people understand just how good God is. We need people like you and me to step into what God has for us to do. Time is running out. And we need people that will step in and make a difference. Come on, somebody. Let's do this. Let's do this. What did Nehemiah do? He said this. I can't come down off this wall because I'm doing a work for God. Sometimes you gotta get a little attitude. Sometimes I'm telling you when the enemy comes your way, you need to quit going like this. You need to go, ooh, baby. you don't wanna come mess over here because I'm in the Lord's army. I've got God on my side. And you can see it. He's behind me and lots of angels are for me. I'm moving forward with God. That's what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah basically said, who do you think you are, Arabs, Ammonites, Ashdodites, so buy a tam ballot. 
You're not as big as my God. I'm gonna keep going for God. Somebody needs to make that choice today. Come on. Somebody needs to make that choice today. I wanna inspire you to make that choice today. Never stop doing what is right. Never stop doing what is right. Ain't nobody got time for that. Keep on doing what's right. Keep on doing what's right for your marriage. Keep on loving God for yourself and for your marriage and for your family and for your friends and for your church. Keep on making a difference. Keep on encouraging people. Keep on getting men connected into the men's ministry and women into women's ministry. Why? Because we love to bless and to help people. Keep on. Keep on doing good because in so doing, you will find the heart of God. Stand firm in your faith. When the enemy comes, resist him. Just show him the hand. And then keep on with God. Keep on with God. Relationships are God or relationships in God are worth fighting for. Let me say that again because somebody needs to say amen and make me feel good that I taught really good today. <laughs> Thank you for laughing, darling. <laughs> relationships in God are worth fighting for. They're worth fighting for. You're worth fighting for. That's why God fights for you. The ones that you love are worth fighting for. That's why God's fighting for them, through you. That's why your prayers are making a difference. So the last question is this, is are you willing to fight for relationships? Are you willing? And I hope your answer is yes. Anybody say yes, you're willing to fight for the relationships in your life? God bless you, I wanna pray for you. Would everyone close your eyes and bow your heads? I first wanna pray for those of you that have heard the Lord talking to you over these last few minutes. You've heard the Lord talking to you. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up all across the room, nobody looking around. You've just, you just felt some, a prompting, just felt a prompting in your heart today. Good God bless you, thank you for your honesty. Lord, I wanna thank you for my friends with lifted hands. And I wanna thank you, Lord, that you're working on their behalf. And I wanna thank you, Lord, for whatever it is that you just spoke into their spirit. I wanna thank you for that. And I pray that it would come to pass because, Lord, what you do is good and we love you today. Thank you, Lord. Can you put your hands down? One more prayer before we go. And this prayer is for those of you that would say, you know, Jeff, in all honesty, I don't have this God thing nailed down yet. If I'm completely honest with myself, I'm not positive at the end of my life, whenever that might be, that I'm gonna be with God in his heaven forever. I've got my doubts. Friend, I just wanna encourage you to recognize something. Jesus loves you. He died and took your sins into the grave because he loves you. He conquered sin and death when he rose on the third day because he loves you. And he has a wonderful plan for your life. And if you could see it right now, he's reaching out his hand to meet you in your heart. He wants to do something for you right now that you can't do for yourself. He wants to forgive your sins, all of them. And deep down inside, you know your best efforts to be good aren't cutting it. That's why you need a savior. That's why you need Jesus, God's son. So if I'm describing you, friend, I wanna invite you to pray a really simple prayer with me right now. God promises to hear this prayer. There's nothing special about it. It's just that God will answer this prayer. It's a prayer of faith. And if you'll pray it right now, he will forgive your sins. He will come into your life and he'll give you new direction. All right, here we go. Boy, girl, mom or dad, grandma or grandpa, doesn't matter. You can pray with me right now. It's your first time here. If you've been here a thousand times before, that doesn't matter. You can pray with me right now. All right, here we go. Lord Jesus, I'm choosing to trust in you right now. Come on, friend, pray with me. I'm choosing right now to believe that you're God's son and that when you conquered sin and death and came out of the grave, I'm choosing to believe that you did that for me. And I want you to know, pray this, friend. Lord, I want you to know that starting right now, I'm not gonna live my life my way any longer. Starting right now, I'm gonna live the rest of my life with you. And here's the last part of the prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive my sins, and thank you for loving me. And it's in your name that I've prayed. 
Amen. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed, if you just prayed with me, those online, the very same thing. If you just prayed with me, would you look up at me right now? Would you just look up at me and give me a wave? Just give me a big wave and say, that's me. Good. Yes, 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 yes. Good. God bless you. Just wave at me until I see you. Yes, 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 yes. Just wave at me until I see you. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Just keep waving at me until I see you. Say, that's me, Jeff. Just wave at me. Yes, God bless you, ma'am. Just wave at me. I'm looking back across this way, just look at me right now and wave at me if you just prayed with me. Anyone over here on, on the section here by the doors? Yes, sir. God bless you. Just wave at me. Jeff, I just prayed with you. Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm looking back across. If I miss you, just wave at me right now. Not going to call you out. Not going to embarrass you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, with the 14 of you, look back this way. Way to go. Way to go. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. that you just took a step toward God. And now I would love to encourage you and help you to know what to do next. So if you have a device, I'd like you to take your device out and text Jesus to 817-476-7757. If you don't, I'd like you to grab the card there on the seat pocket in front of you and let us have your name and how we can contact you and leave it in the boxes by the doors on the way out. Why? Because I wanna help you to know what to do next. And the next step is to be baptized. And we'll let you know about baptism and we'll let you know what else you need to do to walk with God. Hey, everybody, look this way and online. Can we have a big celebration today for 14 in this service that just took a step toward God? God bless you all. I love you. Thank hey, you, Pastor Siegel, Jeff. Hey, Man, I forgot, I forgot yes. to tell about... Um, Kingdom Builders? Yes. Yes, I'll handle that for you. All right, for those of you that just prayed to receive, man, 14. Come on, can we just give it up again for those that prayed to receive Christ? And those of you that did and those watching online, welcome to our spiritual family, man. We are so, so excited for you. But here's what I'd love to do. I'd love everybody to draw your attention to the seat pocket in front of you. There should be a green card here. And those of you that are on the front row, it's behind you. But here's what this card is for. For those of you that just prayed to receive Christ, if you don't text uh, Jesus to that number, we would love for you to fill out this card. But this card is also, if this is your first time to Highbridge Church and you want more information about what we're doing, or maybe you're just looking for community, you wanna be a part of something and making a difference, we would love for you to fill out this green card. And again, there are wooden boxes on the side of the doors. When you exit, just drop it in the top and our team will be reaching out with you and connecting with you. And here at Highbridge Church, our vision is to strengthen people for life by helping them know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. And listen, friend, that is our vision for every single one of you here today. Today because we believe that's God's plan for your life. We want to help you discover what God made you for so that you can ultimately make a difference. And here at High Ridge, we love to hear about those stories when people find their purpose, when they start making a difference. And so a few weeks ago, we received one of these stories and we wanted to share it with you today. We have a lady on, one, on our tech arts team. Her name is Allison. In fact, we have a picture of Allison here on the screen. Allison joined our team a while back and she shared the story that years ago, she came to church for the very first time when she was a teenager. And like many of you who've walked into church for the very first time, it, it can be nerve wracking, right? You don't know what to expect. What am I, am I doing the right thing? How do I do this? What does this look like? Are people gonna judge me? A lot of us know what that feels like to show up ch to church for the first time. Well, Allison felt that way as well. She showed up to church, she got into service, and she remembers as soon as worship started, the words to all the songs were on the screen. Now for her as a first time guest, that meant something to her because now she could sing along with these songs that many people have been singing for years and she felt comfortable. The atmosphere set an environment where she felt comfortable, welcomed, and valued. And that led to her giving her life to the Lord. And now she serves on the tech team, and here's why. Because she wants to create that same environment for first time guests here at Hybrid church so that they can come to know Jesus in a relationship. Come on, isn't that awesome? Man, I love hearing stories like that. And in fact, Allison's right back there on the camera right now for us. In fact, hey church, can we give it up for our entire tech team serving in the back in the tech booth back there? They're the magicians behind the curtain that make everything up here sound and look awesome. And so tech team, I just wanna tell you for everyone, we love you so much. Thank you for serving back there and thank you for the pressure. See, for them, anytime something goes wrong up here, like a mic goes out or the lights don't work, everybody turns around and looks at them, all right? And so listen again, we appreciate you guys being a part of our spiritual family and all the things that you do for us on Sunday and creating that atmosphere. Because here's the thing, guys, God uses an atmosphere like that to bring people into relationship with him. 
him. And that's what it's about. So maybe you're like Allison, you're sitting here today and you're like, you know what? I would love, I'm not really, I don't wanna be on the platform, but I'm a behind the scenes person. I wanna serve. Our tech team is a great place for you to join in and helping creating those atmospheres. And so if you're interested in that, we have so many opportunities, cameras, sound, computers, and all kind of other stuff up there I don't even know about. We would love for you to come and be a part of that. And so you can sign up online, High Ridge Church Serve, or just come and find me after service and say, hey, I'm interested in joining that team. But the reason I shared that win with you, church, is because of your generosity, because you're trusting the Lord with your finances here at High Ridge Church. We are about helping people know God, discover purpose, and make a difference. So I just want to thank those of you that are trusting God with your finances. And there are multiple ways you can give here at High Ridge Church. You can give online or through that envelope that's in the seat pocket in front of you. And we just continue as a spiritual family to trust God and make a difference. Amen. All right, here at High Ridge, we have a few things coming up over the next few months. We have lots of events, and you'll see some of these things on the screen here. If you want more information about some of those, you can find those online. But I just want to highlight two things for you. Here at High Ridge, we are very relational. We love to get people into relationship with others. And so there are two things that are coming up. The first is March 20th. Everyone say March 20th. We got our men's breakfast going down in this room on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. I'll actually be preaching at that men's breakfast and my whole message is gonna be about discovering purpose. I wanna help men, like I was able to years ago, discover what my purpose is. I wanna help men discover what their purpose is. So men, sign up for that event. If you're interested, it will be free breakfast. The whole event is free, but we do want you to register because we don't wanna run out of food. You wanna create chaos at church, run out of free food, all right? So we wanna make sure we have enough for you. So make sure to register for that. And then all the ladies in the house. I got any ladies that like to party and have a good time? Come on, it's okay to party in Jesus' name, all right? We like to party here at High Ridge Church as well. We have a She Speaks event coming up March 26th. Now, for many of you ladies, you're used to attending these events on a Saturday. This one will be on a Friday at 7 p.m. in this room. And again, we would love for you to register, come and be a part of that. It's gonna be awesome, all right? Go ahead and stand to your feet this morning. As you're standing, I would love to call our prayer team forward. We never want you to show up to church with a burden and leave with that burden as well. And so maybe you're sitting in here today and you've got a prayer request you would love for someone to join in faith and pray for you. Or hey, maybe you got a loved one, a loved one that's not here that just needs somebody to be praying for them. We have an awesome prayer team that would love to join in faith with you and pray over those prayer requests, all right? And so for the rest of you, we love you. We hope you have a blessed week. And remember, we are truly stronger together. Y'all be blessed.